Dear students, in this lecture, we shall see that how quadratic functions can help us to understand the cost and the profit functions of a monopoly. Now, this is this diagram that all of us have seen many times in our microeconomic course, and it is showing that monopoly can earn higher levels of profits. As you can see that uh, there is that uh, flavor of parabola in it. For example, you can see this is a parabola, and that is also showing a trend of a parabola. So we are dealing with the quadratic functions in this process. Let's take a numerical example of this situation. Now you can see that the cost function is in a parabolic form or to say in better and more suitable words, it's a quadratic equation. Whereas the price is a linear equation. All of us should remember that profit is basically the difference of the revenue and cost and revenue in turn is the product of price and the quantity so what we need to do is to calculate revenue here and we have done that in this step where the value of price is multiplied with q and the value of cost is already given which we have substituted in this formula so p into q minus c is what we have done the simple substitution in order to get a consolidated form of the profit function. After simplification, we have obtained this form of uh, quadratic profit function, which is actually due to the quadratic cost function that we have used in the process. Now, we have a shortcut way to get to the maximization of such a profit, which in this case is a profit function. This condition is known as and is written as this and it says that if a is less than zero then f of x that is the quadratic function has its maximum at x is equal to minus b over 2a now what we need to do is to see first if our equation is following this condition that if a is actually negative and when i see here i can see there is minus 5 over 2. It affirms that we can use this condition. And the second thing that we need to do is to use this formula. And this formula says that in order to get the value of the independent variable, we need to divide b with 2a. And we have the values of b and a from this equation. This b actually is the coefficient of the linear term and a definitely is the coefficient of the nonlinear that is the quadratic term pairing with the square now using these values that is a is equal to minus 5 over 2 and b is equal to 100 we can get the numerical answer of this expression which here is explained it is b over 2 and this is the value of a simplifying this we get the q value of q is terrace which is 20 this is actually not the final result because this is that output that is likely to maximize the level of profits so this is the profit maximizing output using this and putting it back into the profit function which is there this is the profit function if i put the value 20 in this place and in that place i will get the maximized profit and that will allow us to come to that recommendation for the firm owner that he should produce 20 of the units in order to get the maximum profit which is 1000 and it has become possible because we were using the quadratic functions now we take another example this is the quadratic function but this time it is applied on the profit function now it is in a symbolic form we are focusing more on the profit side at this time and we are dealing not with the numerical values which are comparatively easier to handle and these are the symbolic terms which are slightly difficult to handle but we shall do that because this is the duty of an economist to deal with the numerical as well as the symbolic expressions q is non-negative as we can expect the output cannot be negative now the cost and price functions have already been understood that we have to multiply the price with the output in order to get the revenue and the cost function shall appear as it is now it is the simplification process that all of us already know 
and we need not to go into the details in this lecture. However, you can pause the lecture and do all of this calculation for the sake of rehearsal because math is by rehearsal. Now, after simplifying and rearranging the terms with respect to Q, that is Q and Q square, we get these. Now, I should try to highlight here that the coefficient of Q is small b in the quadratic equation and coefficient of Q square is the value of a in the quadratic equation. So this is what we need to remember. This is a and this is small b and these are from the point of view of the quadratic equation. However, this a and that b are not from the point of view of quadratic equation. Rather, these are pertaining to cost and price functions. So after understanding this difference, we are coming towards the maximization and we remember that the maximization considers this condition where A should be less than zero. Now looking towards this A, it is B plus beta and with this assumption that it is negative because it is appearing with this negative sign, we can say that maximization can be achieved by using this expression that we just used in the last example. Now we are putting the values into this expression. Now this B is equal to LA minus alpha. So you see B is appearing as A minus alpha and two is as it is, whereas the value of small a is here, which is B plus beta. We have written it B plus beta. Now this is the output that is likely to maximize the profit. Definitely it is the target that we need to produce, but actually the target is to maximize the profit for owner. That is why we need to inform him about the maximized profit as well. And you can see that this is the value after putting the QM into that profit function, which is up there. This is that profit function in which we shall put this QM and we shall get this final expression. Now you can pause the video and you can do this rehearsal of calculating this and simplifying it to this form, which is the most suitable form. And in this way, we have dealt with a symbolic situation in which numerics are not involved and the profit function is in a quadratic form. Now, considering these answers that we have just obtained, we need to be careful about the parameters because we have to follow the parametric restrictions when we don't have numeric answers. Now, this A minus alpha. If A is greater than alpha, that is 4 minus 2, then the answer will be 2 and the remaining answer will be positive. So, there will be some positive output. But what if A and alpha they are equal that is 2 minus 2 it will become 0 and once we have 0 in the numerator the whole answer will become 0 in this case as well as in this case the output as well as will be equal to 0 if alpha is equal to or we should say a is equal to alpha or alpha is less than or a is less than alpha because that is yet another case the third case because in this case we saw that the profit is zero because the output is zero. But what if A is less than alpha? This value might not give us a positive answer. And once we don't have any positive answer, it will be a problem for us and it will not be anything meaningful from the economic point of view. Now let us see the diagram in order to understand it well. This is a normal situation where a minus alpha is positive and we are getting a function of profit which is in its standard form and the profit maximizing output is also there now what if it is happening that the output is zero and profit is zero this line is actually showing that situation where both of the variables at the origin are zero that is the output as well as the profit so this is an undesired situation this parametric restriction is what we need to remember. This is a desirable situation for having a positive profit as well as an output which is not zero.